Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Value Videos. This video is going to cover how to automate Bollinger Bands on Excel. So I'm going to show you what it looks like first and then I'll show you how to do it. So I'm going to change my ticker symbol up here to cat for caterpillar. I already have my dates. I want daily prices. I'm going to make my moving average uh, 20 in this case. I'm going to run the program. It's going to get the data. So I have a 20 day moving average, the upper and lower Bollinger Bands, and then a chart set up right here so I can look at how I might want to trade this. So that's what the, the macro is going to look like when we're done. Let me show you how to build it. Okay, so I went ahead and switched over to the uh, workbook from when we did the simple moving average crossover just a couple videos ago. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see the simple moving average crossover how-to video, uh, I'll put an annotation on the side right here. So you can go ahead and click on this annotation and go watch that video. And that'll show you exactly how to make all of this. And so this just pulls in the simple moving average based on whatever time frame you want to put in. Um, and it's going to be super easy to edit this macro, or edit, yeah, edit the macro and this workbook to fit uh, how to make the Bollinger one, the Bollinger Band one. It's going to be like really fast. That's how easy it is. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with this, and we're going to go over to our Visual Basic. And so I have the Data Get macro. This is the exact same one that we coded in the Simple Moving Average crossover video. Um, we're just going to have to edit the last few lines, and we can change it pretty quickly to be um, the simple move or to be the the Bollinger Band one that I just showed you so first thing we're gonna do um, to do the Bollinger Bands we need the adjusted close we need a simple moving average of any time frame that we're looking at 20 I guess is the most common one but you can do anything you want and then these two columns are gonna be our lower and upper Bollinger Bands and so this one will be our lower band and this one will be our upper band and then the formulas that fit in here are gonna be um, two standard deviations of the price movement, um, either plus or minus the simple moving average. So it's going to be really easy to do. Um, we're going to go in here and I'm going to change. So I'm just going to start. Um, we have the end row. Uh, we figure out what the last row is. So that's then there. And then we have column nine is going to be our simple moving average. And then column 10, which is J, J is column 10. Uh, we're going to have, instead of being a formula, it's not going to need to be a formula. We can just do equals. Uh, we'll start with lower band and then cells uh, 1 comma 11 equals our upper band and then I'll just run it real quick so you can see so it fills in our lower and our upper and now the formulas that's gonna fill in these two columns is gonna be really easy to do also and so we'll do um, column I is gonna stay the same because we're just doing the simple moving average column J is gonna change just slightly and so the formula is um, the row right next to it. So I'll, I'll write it in the ex, uh, into the Excel real quick so you can see it's uh, the same row and the column right before which is our simple moving average and then because it's a lower band it's minus and then I'm going to open a parenthesis to make the math go through right. Two, So it's minus two times the standard deviation and it's the standard deviation of the prices um, and it's depending on how far we're looking back. In this case it's 100 so it'll be um, H2 through H101. I'm hit OK. I didn't close my parentheses, so it gave me an error. And so that's the formula that's going to be, and we're just going to copy it all the way down, but we're going to write the code in VBA to do it. So the way to do that is um, the cell immediately to the left. So in the R1C1 format, the cell immediately to the left is coded as RC open brace minus one. It's a negative one because it's one column backwards. So C negative one is column before it. So RC minus 1 says stay in the same row but go back one column and so that's that puts us at our moving average. So it's our simple moving average and then minus because we're in the lower band minus and then I'm going to open up parentheses two times and then instead of average we're going to do standard deviation STDEV minus two times the standard deviation of um, and then we're going to have the cells previous all the way through however far we're looking back because cells 11, 1 tells us to look back how far we're going but that's looking at our other look back period and we want to make sure all of our look back periods are the same so I'm going to change that 11 to a 10 so all of them are looking at cell A10 which is our 100 our look back period right there um, and then we have so we have one back and then column two back in this case column two back in this case so all that is exactly how we need it now because we're doing a standard deviation instead of an average we can't go all the way to the end row we just have to go one short of the end row and so that changes that so that's all we need I'm gonna run the get data right here and I didn't close my last parentheses so I'm just gonna do that and then finish running it so if we look right here 
our code worked. It did our simple moving average uh, minus two times our standard deviation of two through 101. So if I were to change this to let's say a 50 and run it, so now it goes through 51. So it's gonna change our look back period based on whatever we put in here and not in cell A11. So I can delete A11. Now we just have to write the code for the upper band, which now that we already have the lower band, the upper band is super easy. So I'm just gonna highlight between the quotes right here. So I'm gonna include the quotes. I'm gonna do control C. Then I'm gonna go down here. And I'm gonna highlight from the uh, underscore all the way down to the end of the next row and delete that. So now K2, our formula in R1C1 format, I'm gonna do control V to paste the same formula. So it's the exact same formula as before, except we're just gonna to need to make a couple changes. So in, when it was in column J, our simple moving average is one column before it. But now that it's in column K, our simple moving average is actually two columns before. And then we have two times the standard deviation of our prices, which is not two columns previous. It's actually three now, because from upper band to prices is one, two, three. So we change that two to a three. And then we go over here. We still have cells A10. That's good. And then we have our column two to three becomes a three right there. And then our end row, we can't go all the way to the bottom, so we do minus one. And I should have the parentheses at the end. I didn't forget it this time. So now if I run the whole thing, now we have our upper band. Oh, I did mess up. This should be a plus and not a minus. So I'm going to go back here, and I'll just change that minus to a plus. There we go. Get data. So now we have our upper band and our lower band, our moving average, our close, and our dates. And so that's all that's involved in our, movie, or in our Bollinger Band chart. I'll go ahead and go to line. I'll insert the line. There's an ugly version of it. Let's go ahead and move that to its own sheet so we can see it a little better. So there you go. So that's how to do the Bollinger Band chart. And so a lot of people like to trade based on Bollinger Bands. Um, if they're outside the standard deviation or if they cross over the moving average, um, that would indicate a buy or a sell. Obviously, I'm not indicating a buy or sell to anyone on this video. This is not meant to be investment advice. So don't go trade on this um, unless it's your own strategy and you don't take anything from me. So um, just as an example to show you what it would look like on a 20 day, um, you can change this time frame. You can change day to W for weekly or M to monthly, run get data. So we got our Bollinger Bands. We'll go back to our chart and see how it changed. So by doing a 20 day, it got to be a little more volatile. Um, and so you could that could be better or worse depending on your trading strategy. But that's how to do the automated Bollinger Bands. So hopefully that helps. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put comments below and I will try to get to them if I can or maybe some of the awesome people who watch my videos will be able to uh, answer some of your questions as well. That's how to automate Bollinger Bands on Excel. I uh, hope that helped and thanks for watching. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. And you'd probably like these ones too. Function. So normally functions you can do equals if and then do some stuff or you can do equals average and find the average of some numbers. Um, but you could actually make your own custom function to do